complicated than you think. And you have to have two cameras. And of course, you can't ever use the other one where the other one is. All right, Shannon and other Shannon Slayton. Both of my Shannons are here. All right. Uh, can anybody see me on Facebook? Let's wait for someone to say something on Facebook. I know if you're on Instagram, just stay here. That's good. see what we got if you're on Instagram uh, Facebook right now and you're having trouble or you're not seeing me all right I'm seeing a few people so Brandon is on and you can see me and hear me that's great all right now it says I have two people on Facebook that's great so if you're there on Facebook, that's fantastic. Instagram, I see you people. You are coming in and that's fantastic. Hello, Amy Bellis. I'm glad Facebook's working for you. That's fantastic. I have a few things that we're going to do. I have Ruby who is talking to me. Hold on. I had some difficulties, but it's coming. That's the thing about these things, right? You never know what's going to happen. All right, so today I'm so glad for the people who are here repeats from yesterday. And if you uh, want to share it with other people, that's fantastic. I have the um, replay on Facebook of yesterday, which is fantastic. And um, I've got some people watching that. And then I even had more people show and share their work. And it was fantastic. Like, this is me saying, yay! Yeah. Um, so I wanted to show you all. So this was my final priest yesterday. And um, I wanted to show you. Do you see how faded it became? Um, this is one of the things about watercolor. Is that it fades. And um, that's also why the more layers you put on it. The brighter it becomes. Uh, Ruby and Lucy, I see you. I see you. I'm glad that you're joining us today. Um, and we're just going over what watercolor looks like. And this is also depends, as for the fading part, depends on how expensive those watercolors are. Because the more expensive the watercolors are, and that's what these are, they will be brighter. But it doesn't really matter because it's still pretty effect, right? So that's fantastic. And this is what we did for our um, training yesterday. We are going to do, I call these watercolor drills first. And then we're going to get into some painting. We're not going to talk as much today, I promise. We're going to make art. And I had a, several boys join us yesterday. And I have some requests for some boy stuff. I promise I will try. Um, okay, so we're going to do that. I wanted to also show you, especially for the mamas out there who were like, I'm going to go through paper right and left here. So one of the things that I learned very fast when practicing watercolor is to make smaller paper, especially if you're using the nice stuff. If you're using the nice stuff, a good way to make it last longer is to sit here and take the piece of paper and cut it in half. So I'm going to do that right now just to show you what I do, especially when I'm learning. So I've just cut that piece of paper in half like that and this is a good piece for our final project right like so when I say hey we're gonna go do our real thing 
I would use this size of paper. But for our watercolor drills and our practice that we're going to do, I would take this and I would cut it in half. Okay, that way you have, you have good paper, you get the practice of the good paper. Instagram is coming. Instagram, I promise it's coming. It's going to have trouble today with actual internet connection. It's been, I think everybody in the world is using the internet. So hi, um, Stephanie, and hi, um, Charlie. Um, hi, Opal. How are you today? <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to do these as my... Um, watercolor drills. So I wanted to show you that I have some already made and that might actually help. Hi Miss Mandy. Okay so I'm going to move this stuff over to the side and I'm going to take some of these. And you can do this with even your printer paper that you are using, right? I'm just saying we could save paper. We don't have to waste paper for sure. Hi Amanda. I see you. I'm glad you can join us. Kids are asking what watercolor dual tip marker is used for. So a watercolor marker dual tip, well, a watercolor marker is two things. There's they have some that are a brush. Hang on, I've got something similar to this. Let's So, this is a watercolor pin is what it's called and what you do is you put the watercolor in it and it has a brush tip you see that brush tip and it helps make really nice things one of the things that this would be used for is after you draw this you can then take some water with this brush tip and you can actually do even more Okay, the watercolor dual tip marker basically would have a bigger end here and a smaller end here. And that's kind of um, brush tip versus a little fine liner one on this end. And it's the same principle. But I also had, they do make watercolor markers that actually look like markers. I do, yeah, I do have one. This right here. This is an aqua marker. And the aqua marker, this is probably one. This is a brush tip. And then this is a fine tip. You see that? Now, that one had more ink. One of the things that you can do then is you can take your water, um, your paintbrush, and you take it and see it becomes more watered down. Do you see how that line literally f went completely away? Now, watercolor markers are fantastic on trips. Fantastic on trips. So that's something that I use them for, but that's... Um, what that is that was a very very good question if anybody else has questions you know put them in the comments i am reading them if i don't get them online here i will get them uh later after the video okay so our first thing that we're going to do is we are going to do some exercises to make sure that we are getting it all we know how to do it so i'm getting my normal brush Okay, and my normal brush, remember our first step, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way here. You will need a pencil today. And of course, remember, I have my handy dandy paper towel. If you notice, I recycle these. I let them dry and then I literally continue to use them um, mainly because I don't recycle on a regular basis so I have to figure out how to save the planet somehow right so remember the first thing I did is I need to spray this down and activate my watercolors so I'm gonna spray it but if you remember yesterday what we did was we 
took our paintbrush in our water and we dipped it. Water, paint, water, paint, water, paint. And we went to each one and we made sure that we had water and it was clean water on our brush before we would did this because what's going to happen is that these get really milky really fast and we can't do that. Hey Lindsay Miller people, how are you? Okay, so this is what we're going to do today first. We're going to do it in three different colors, all right? And we are going to first do thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. I'm going to do it in purple today. All right, so I've got my scrap paper right here, and I'm going to do thick, and then I'm going to get some more paint, and then I'm going to do a thin one. And I'm going to do thick. And I'm going to do a thin one. Now, I haven't gone back. Anybody with me? I also am really trying really, really hard, okay, to have them not touch. Does everybody see that? Right here, they're, they're bleeding. So I want you to pay attention to that, and I want you to try really hard not to let them touch. Thick, thin, thick, thin. One of the reasons I make you do this, oh, that one was awfully thick, is that it helps you learn how to control the brush. Okay, how about I do this for just a minute? Let's see if I can't get, yeah. All right, thin line, thick line. And the one thing that I'm doing here is I have it horizontal and then I'm rotating it horizontal and then I'm rotating it the other way so it's a nice thin line do y'all see that so we do a thin line and you're also learning how much pressure you actually put on it all right so thick thin thick thin thick thin I'm gonna cut just continue this right here and remember when you're going over it, sometimes you need to get more water. Now I'm bleeding up here because I had that. You see how it's dragging that paint? But that's a good lesson. Okay. So this is lesson one. Thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. Okay. We're learning how to use our brush. Thick and thin, thick and thin. And then we're also learning pressure-wise, all right? That's exercise one. Who's ready to move to ne next lesson? Yeah? No? Maybe? I don't know. That's probably one of the hardest parts. Anybody have any questions? I will sit here for just a moment and pause and see if I can see any questions that come up. You know, I realized that if you're painting, you can't sit here and talk on the comments the whole time. <laughs> so that is a difficult problem when it comes to teaching art online. You can't see. Hey, Kathleen, how are you? I now have two Kathleen's in my uh, life. It's very interesting. All right. So... I'm going to move on to the next one. Are we ready for this? Yes, maybe. Okay, so next we're going to do is the pressure test. So this time, I don't know, what color do you want? I'm going to use red. No, pink. No, I'm going to use blue. All right. So I'm getting some paint on my brush. I've put it in the water and I've put it on the actual paint. I've got a whole lot on here. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to do fat, thin, fat, thin only by doing a pressure. So I've started really hard and then I'm lifting up. And then I'm lifting up. And then I'm lifting up. And I'm lifting up. Do you see how that looks? I'm going to let you zoom into this real quick. Okay, do you see how it's 
a lot of paint, little paint, a lot of paint, little paint. And all I did with this, and I'm going to see if I can't do it like this. Can y'all see that better? Pushing down, lightening up, pushing down, lighten up, pushing down, lighten up, pushing down. Now that time, I didn't make skinny ones. I would like us to do skinny ones, but I realized that it's a lot harder than it looks, honestly, to control paint and water at the same time. So, yesterday I had a question from Project Connect. That's a place here in Nashville that I volunteer at. Who wants me to make homemade paint? Because a lot of people may not have um, watercolor paint. Or paint at their house, but still wants to do art. So how would we do that? I said, we're going to draw. <laughs> uh, everybody's got pencils, right? Or pen. So I don't know what we're going to do. I get to deal with that this weekend and figure out what I'm going to do with that. But that would be free classes also. All right, I'm doing thick. I'm pushing down and I'm not pushing down. Pushing down. Then pushing down, lift up, but still keeping it on the thing. How's everybody going? Garrett, I see you. Okay, so it doesn't really matter how big a piece of paper you use. Today, at the beginning of this, I decided let's not waste paper. And we actually cut our paper in half into these little bitty papers so what I did was I took a big piece of paper like that cut it down the middle and then I cut it even again okay so there you go and that's what I did all right and it doesn't matter what color we're using right now we're just practicing so we're, but we're pushing down hard, lifting up, pushing down hard, lifting up. And we have one more of these little lessons to go. And then we'll get into actually painting something. And I'll have to tell you, when I was learning this in school, I hated this part. It's like, just let me paint. But you know how when you are learning spelling, you need to write the words a million times to learn how to spell it? FYI, I'm still not a good speller, and I had to write those words like 50 times each. <laughs> um, you kind of have to just keep on practicing so you get better. And that's what this is all about, these little things. And honestly, when you're finished with this, it actually does look pretty cool. And we could do something with them later. You can make other projects with them, and that works too, and that's an actually great idea. Now, do you see, I've put it over here in my water, okay, and my water is really nice and dirty and that kind of stuff. What should I have done? Had, did anybody listen to yesterday? Paper towel, paper towel, people. I should have cleaned off my paper towel first, then I put it in my water, and what was the reason for that? Hopefully, I hear you all saying to clean, make sure my water, to save my water. Because water needs to be as clean as possible when you're doing your uh, paint over here. The reason is, is that we don't want these to get milky, okay? Another thing that I wanted to show you all or talk to you all about was what do you do with your paintbrush? Don't leave your paintbrushes in water overnight especially your um especially your watercolor brushes okay so i'm going to do my third and last one are we ready and this is going to be short little baby strokes all right this time i think i'm going to do red just because all right 
So here we go. This is going to be short little strokes. I'm going to do, think of it as C's. And I'm going to just make those little C's just like that over and over again. And then I want you to try, can you make them thinner? See, it's awfully hard to make those thinner. That wasn't, like I'm sort of doing it. Not much though, right? And I'm going to keep doing it. So what we're doing here is this is a repeating pattern. I want you to try to keep them all the same size. And even me, now if you noticed, I got kind of lazy down here at the bottom of this, right? This is all over. This is much bigger over here than these over here on this part. And so what you do that is you have to try to keep it the same size. Okay, so it's just a little baby C over and over and over. I'm doing it the right kind of C and then I'm doing a backwards C. And I'm just repeating it over and over again. Stephanie, how did I do what? I think there's a little bit of a lag when it does it. Okay, I'm liking this. I'm liking this pattern a lot. Do you see I'm also testing how far can I go without putting my paintbrush back into the paint? I'm trying to see how far can I go with my paint. I'm also learning as I do this, more paint on my brush, the more red, right? The brighter it is. The more water on my brush or the longer I go without paint, it gets lighter. You see, lighter and even lighter. Now, I've tried really hard to keep these the same color. Ooh, that one's, that was wet on my paper. Did you see that? Look how light that's getting. Nice. Okay, guess what? We're going to do one more thing to this one right here. Oh, do you know what I should have done there? Don't y'all love it when the teacher messes up? <laughs> I should have put it on my paper towel first and then put it in my water. Then I put it back on my paper towel, okay? All right, here's what I'm going to do. So next, I'm actually going to get another color. Let's get, I'm going to get this goldy brown color here. And for you all, this color. It really doesn't matter, people. I'm really not that picky. And we are just doing this as practice. Okay, I'm going to try with this same paintbrush to put a dot in between each one. I'm barely touching it. And you see, I still haven't gone back for paint yet, but it is getting lighter. So I want to go back and get some more gold on my brush. And I'm doing little baby dots. Are you with me? Maybe, hopefully. So I am so happy that you all are here today because it is such a pretty day outside. The fact that you are with me painting today for an hour is so fantastic when it's so pretty outside. That is awesome. I hope you go for a walk after this, for sure. I've already gone for a walk today. You know, while I'm at this, I kind of like this. Isn't that a fun little paper? Look how fun that is. I just love how fun that is. This is cool. This is very, very cool. Okay. I'm going to come over here back to my blue one. Okay. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add green dots to this one. 
and I'm going to do it in between, you know, random. I tried to do a pattern there, but then I was like, eh. That's what I like about art. It can be anything you want. It helps make decisions. It helps with hand eye coordination. It helps you problem solve. Oh, and it's, well, takes discipline too, right? I mean, y'all are not, that's great. Okay, so that is our exercises for today. That's fantastic. Now, let's get to drawing something. What do you say? <laughs> okay, anybody have any questions right now about our exercises? Okay, so what we did first was we did thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. We also learned about pressure and how at the beginning and how at the end it gets lighter. More paint at the beginning, less paint at the end. All right? That's what we learned there. With this blue one, we learned fat, thin, fat, thin, and pressure, meaning we push down hard and then we lift it up. We push down hard and lift it up. And that's how we got these nice little smudges, these puddles of paint. And I just love these puddles. They are fantastic. Okay. And so we also learned how to do these little baby dots, right? And we tried really hard not to get the dots touching everything. Isn't that fantastic? Okay. Putting that over to the side. And then we learned here how to do... Little baby C's. We tried to not let them touch. And we also tried little baby uh, yellow dots in between. This was tight, right? This is not as easy as it looks. Because paint can go everywhere. That's one of the things I like about watercolor too. Is that the mess of watercolor is so much easier to clean up, man. Oh my goodness. You get it on your clothes. You put it in the laundry room. No problem. You cannot do that with acrylic paint. Let me tell you. It does not come out. My husband will tell you that everything I own has paint on it. I'm actually pretty clean right now. Okay. So, let's see if we talked about... I think we talked about everything. I'm going to get a bigger piece of paper. I'm going to do these half sheets for our next project. Okay. And this is what I was saying. So I showed you when you saw on my uh, stories, you saw the little girls. One was mine and one was my niece's, Ruby's. And so that was my example. But I also wanted to show you, like, I did this right before we got on. This is really rough. This is just me sketching out kind of a lesson plan. But I think we're going to do girls and boys. Everybody's going to do girls and boys, or you can just do whichever one you want. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to show you how to do both. And since we have some boys, I want to do you all first, okay? So I hope you all are watching. And um, everybody can follow along this first half. And then we'll start breaking it up when we start adding clothes and things like that. So our first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna draw. So you need your pencil, okay? And I'll be honest with you, I want you all to start trying not to erase. This is huge. I want you to repeat after me. I will try not to erase. I will try not to erase. One of the reasons is, is I want you to start learning how to draw as soft as possible. Now that's going to be hard for me because you got to be able to see it. So we're going to see how this goes. All right. Honestly, since I'm going to do a boy and a girl, I'm going to do it this way. Okay. We're going to do our boy right here. Can everybody see me? All right. So our first step that we're going to do, I'm going to divide my piece of paper in half. Can you all see that line? Yeah, I think so. That's good. We're going to draw our face first. So I want us to draw a U. Can everybody see that? 
Hi, Shannon. I see you coming on. You should get out a piece of paper and you should play along. Okay, so we've got our circle for our face. It's basically just a U. And does anyone notice that I don't have a top on my head at the moment? It's okay. Stay with me. Now... I'm gonna draw a skinny little neck. Okay, now we are not making this like, we're almost making a bobblehead, but not really. This is a good example. Everybody has these pop things, right? This is Bob, hi Bob, he's Bob Ross. But do you see how his, he has a U, do you see this? right there oh that is brilliant i didn't even know that when i was doing this look at that he's got a u perfect u and he's got a tiny little baby neck down here that's what we're going for okay and now we're going to talk about shoulders so a body is in this basically a rectangle and a rectangle down here maybe a square eh, we'll see all right so what I want us to do is I want us to draw very lightly. Are we here? I'm drawing very lightly. A rectangle. Can y'all see that? So let's look at this. You, a little baby neck, which makes a rectangle. Yes. Hello, Carla, and Summer, and Gavin, and hopefully, uh, let's see, we got Evelyn. Y'all did some great work yesterday. Actually, everybody did great work. All right, and now we're going to draw some pants. All right, so this time, if let's look at Bob. Let's look at Bob's pants. Does anybody... Um, if you had to not know that this was pants and you had to say that this was a shape, what shape would you call it? I would say that this leg is a rectangle. And this leg is a rectangle. But I'd also say, so let's do that. Let's make two rectangles. And let's stop right there. Everybody see that? So what I did was I started with one rectangle and I kind of made it a V shape. Another way you could do this is watch this. You could do make a rectangle and erase that part. And look at that, we got pants. How cool is that? Okay, I'm also gonna say that a lot of people make a, all kinds of different shoes. So I'm seeing a lot of shoes that do this. Well, that makes him look like he's doing this with his feet. And we're wanting our guy to just look at us straight. All right, so, well, Bob's feet go out like that, don't they? Hmm. All right, it's up to you, but I'm going to show you a different way to do it. Okay, so this way, I want us to make, it is a circle or half a circle cut in half. You see that? It's, an, it's half of an eclipse with a straight line. So he looks like he's looking right at me. How cool is that? Now, do we think he needs arms? No. Okay. So, we're going to come here from his shoulder. All right. We're going to draw a straight line. And instead of making him straight out like this, we're going to make it come in closer. All right. Now, he has stick arms. We need to make the stick arms a little bit better. So we're gonna do little baby rectangles. 
and round and around. Okay, are we good? Now, let's make some eyes. All right, I want you to see. So Bob's eyes here are just round circles, so you could do that. But I want you to try to do a little bit different. So it's a little football. Anybody see those little footballs? All right. And now I'm gonna make two different noses. I want you to see these two noses that I did on this. This one is an L. And this one is just a little baby nose. So you can choose. I'm gonna do an L for this guy. All right. Now let's talk about lips. I know you boys probably don't want big lips. Let's just look at some lips here. There's several ways to do lips. You can do, for the girls, a heart with a little mouth. That's a heart with a line through it, and that makes lips. You can also do, which I think this is what we're going to do for our boy. Okay? You can also do, start that way. And do two eclipse, two little curves on top. Okay, so pick whichever one you want to do. I'm going to leave it right there so you can see it. And now we are going to do, I'm going to do a little mouth like that. Now, let's do a hat. I think he needs a hat. Honestly, today is baseball's opening day that's not happening. So I decided we're going to, I'm going to do the Braves because that's what my husband does. Okay, so I'm rounding his head and I'm going to make straight line and then I'm going to make a little line like that. Does everyone see that? Now, boys have ears. Girls, we're great because we can actually, not that you all aren't, but you can cover up your hair with your ears. But boys, you all have ears. They're hardly ever covered, right? Unless you got earphones on. And that's where I'm going to start. Now, girls, let's talk about some hair real quick. Stay with me. So... I like to do a side swoop like this. Yeah, I see you, Amy Bellis. With your cubs. And then that's some hair. I also have, I'm doing my face. I could also do a braid, right? And a braid could look... But everybody has bangs or something like that, okay? So let's play with that. But let's start painting because I want to paint. That's what we're here for, right? Okay, so I'm painting my dude. And man, I'm trying to reconnect. Stay with me. I hope that was okay. I got a warning. So I am going to start painting. I'm going to start with the face, okay? So I have flesh color right here. If you don't have flesh color, let's make some. Are you ready for this? Boy, this is going to get deep. I hope you're with me. So flesh color is pink and orange together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some water, get me some pink. I'm putting it over here on top of my, in my palette. You see how I'm just bringing some and I'm putting it down? Like that. Okay, I am going to wipe off my brush on my paper towel. I'm going to get me some more water and I'm going to get some orange. And bring it over here. And do you all see? 
Can you all see that I just made some? Now, it might be too orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some water on my brush and plop it in there. Now, it's time to try it out. So I'm taking it. I'm going to try it out on his hands first. Does everyone notice that I did not, I'm not in the lines? And that's okay. I'm going to try to do everything in this face here, but the eyeballs. And this is why we did all of those little tests. Okay, so we can get in all of those little areas. Now, I have paint right here from my hand. Okay, I'm liking it. Looking good. Did everybody like their flesh color that you made? If you had a little darker, what you could do is you could add some brown into it, and that also helps it. All right, now, because I'm doing Braves, I am going to do the red shirt with the white pants but I do know that they normally have blue socks on. So I'm gonna start with socks. So I'm bringing some blue here. I'm gonna go halfway and halfway. That's pretty cute. I'm also saying that he has a blue hat. So I'm coming in here and I'm gonna paint his hat. Now, does your guy have blue eyes or green eyes? Actually, don't. Let's not do that yet. Let's stop. Let's go back to the um, shirt. All right. So, most sh baseball shirts are short sleeved. Sometimes they have long sleeves, but this one is short, which means I get to go back. Does everyone see how I'm adding sleeves? I just added a little triangles basically right there on the corners. All right, I'm going to first do my red and then I'm going to go back and paint his arms. Okay, guys, look at that. Anybody got any questions so far? I think this is looking pretty good. All right, how do you paint white? What's everyone saying? You get white paint? No, that's not right. Remember what I told you yesterday? No one ever uses white because white is the color of your paper. But that doesn't mean that you don't shade it. So I'm actually going to use some gray. Now, let's say you don't have fancy gray. You could use blue. You could use whatever color you want, right? So I'm coming in, and when I am doing the gray, I'm just doing the outline of it. Y'all see that? And it kind of made him look like he's 3D now. That's good. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to his arms, to my homemade peach. Put that right in there. Okay. Cleaning out my brush. We're going to talk about those eyeballs. And I have this big brush. We can do it, people. We can do it. One of the reasons I did not do the right now was because I wanted this to dry first. And so it wouldn't bleed. So I think I'm going to make green eyes. So I'm getting... I do not have a lot of paint and water on my brush. I'm getting mostly paint. And you see, that's a dog hair there. That's great. I've got some green. And I'm coming in here, and I'm going to do just a dot. That's why we practiced dots earlier. You have to do it very, very lightly. You have to do it very, very carefully. Okay, this guy doesn't look like he has any hair going to give him some brown hair. So I got some brown. I'm just going to do right here. Now. You see that? That looks good. 
Okay. Something else. I think you need lips. Now, I know you boys are like, I don't want lipstick. Yeah, but right now you don't even look like you have a mouth. We got to do something. This goes back to how little those eyes are. You're just going to do a little bit of pink right there. Not much. Okay. What about these shoes? Black? Black tennis shoes, maybe. Okay. And black tennis shoes. Anybody got any questions? We're about to be finished. Tomorrow, I want everyone to know, we are going to do um, a giraffe. Yes, I got a request for a giraffe. So we're going to do a giraffe. Monday, how about we work on just the girl version of this? Or do you all have other requests? So please send them in, whatever you want. I'm going now to my pen. And remember, the pen or the pencil, doesn't matter, works at the end. So I'm coming in here and... Um, I'm going to write Braves here. He also, most likely, don't those Braves have the, have that coming down and they even have a little bit there. And do you all see, I'm sketching. I'm not doing it perfect. Everybody notice that? Oh, that was wet. Did you all see that? Oh, boy. That was wet. Bleeding. That's okay, though. You all might want to wait until it's more dry. I know I'm rushing here, but I wanted to make sure I got most of him done. Now, back here on this hat. All right. Don't the Atlanta Braves have an A on their hat? Boston people that have a B, right? I'm coming in here and I'm adding just a little bit. Look at what I did on those eyes. I only outlined the top portion. I did not do the bottom portion. So I did the top portion. So this is what I did. Right there. Okay, and no, Amy, I can't put a C on a Braves hat. That's not going to work. Okay. And isn't it a... I don't even know. That doesn't even look right to me. Don't y'all love it that I have no idea? <laughs> okay. And I'm going to put a little road there for him to stand on. And the reason I did that, you know what? I'm even going to, I know, I'm going too fast all of a sudden, right? It's okay. You all can rewatch this on Facebook. And there you go. You have your little guy. Now, here's the other thing that I like to do after this. So, I'm right here, and I'm going to go in with some red. And add just a little bit more red. Okay, guys. We are calling it quits. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to stay on and answer any questions if you have any. I want you to know that... Tomorrow, we won't be doing as much little tests. We will be doing one, but not as many. And we are going to be making a giraffe. So, some colors that you may need are browns and yellows and black. If you don't have those, we can figure it out. It can be a, you know, red one or something like that, okay? Um, let's see. I also wanted to tell you, remember, I have my cow class coming up. 
you can look at my stories and I will have a link to where you can go to purchase this. This is a cow that we're going to paint for the basement marketplace. It's going to be a three day class on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. It's going to be $25. It's going to be in Zoom, so it's more reliable. And that's what we're going to paint. And tomorrow, again, we will work on a giraffe. Monday, we're going to work on making a girl. Okay? And give me some ideas of what you're thinking about. What would you like to see painted? So I am um, finished today, guys. That's what we've got. He's pretty cute. If I could go longer, I would, but they're going to kick me off here. So, I will see you all later. I'll talk to you later. Bye!